welcome to Beyond the Bridge, episode three, session three, week three, part one. Uh, and today we are joined by Carl, Scar, Waleko, and Mary. And as usual, I'm your GM, I'm Lage, I'll be the person orchestrating the catastrophe which is about to unfurl. Um, I'm, yeah, pretty boring, currently working in the lab as an air, air analyst. Um, recently started playing Shadowrun, 5th edition, that's pretty fun. Um, played two games so far on the weekend. Uh, it's very fun playing like a little person with loads of Bioware, cat eyes. Kind of got a bit of Witcher vibe going on with that. By the way, Witcher 3, amazing game, also played that. Uh, currently working my way through Fallout 4. Life's good. It was raining today. Uh, yeah. Not much to say, really. So, uh, Carl, tell us a bit about yourself. As I said, I'm Carl. Um, I don't really have a lot to say. Uh, I'm in university studying games technology. Uh, played D and D for like a long time. Since so I was this like, is most definitely not your your first adventure. No, it's not. It's not. I've played. This is my first ever paladin, but, you know, um, I mostly play, like, wizards, but I've gone away from that. Um, played loads of different systems. I've played Shadowrun, I've played Stars Out Number, D&D 5th Edition, 3.5, I don't even know. I, I'm, I can't even name all of them. So, was there a and d, &D before 3.5, or was 3.5 the breaking ground for you? 3.5 was definitely when I came in. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, it took me ages to move on to Pathfinder. I completely skipped fourth edition, and then uh, fifth edition came out. I think um, uh, it me JP's West Marches with um, Stephen Lumpkin. That was the game that convinced me that fifth edition was okay to go into, because it took me a while before I even realized what edition they were using, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. But uh, so you played Stars Without Number. That's that's a fun game. Uh, yeah. you get up to much in it? Um, I'm starting a new campaign soon, uh, but my last campaign, I don't even know, we did some weird stuff. We were on like a space cruise and I was playing a psychic. It, it, was, all, it was all kinds of messed up, really. Oh, I enjoyed uh, my uh, Stars Without Number game because no one played a psychic. And before that, I've been playing Dark Heresy, like... Um, pretty heavily for a year or two, uh, and psychers in Dark Heresy. They just explode and kill everyone. Heretics. Inevitable. Uh, Dark Heresy's fun. Um, anything else about yourself, Carl? Uh, not particularly. I'm just ready to you know, roll on and get that TPK we've all been waiting for. So, uh, you you a student or are you uh, an employed yeah. member of humanity? I'm a student at the moment. I used to be an employed, but I've just, you know, been studying or not studying when I should be studying. <laughs> Playing Good games plan. like this. Good plan. <laughs> yeah, put that yeah. studying to one side. Put that one studying to one side. Okay, yeah. and uh, Scar, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I am British, obviously. <laughs> um, I deal drugs for a living. On a Perhaps not the, the best thing to admit on the internet. <laughs> I mean, uh, this will be recorded for for all time. It's okay. It's all legal, mostly. I'm a pharmaceutical technician. Um, before that, I went to university and I studied hacking and network security. And then I've changed. So here I am selling drugs. And I've never d and d before. Ever. Like ever before? Like ever before. You um, watched any D and D, or have you uh, played any the other RPG games? The first one I watched was like last week. You guys playing? Ah, so, excellent. So, so the bar's serious. already set. Too that's high. That's it. I totally know what I'm doing. Okay. But, excellent. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Uh, Warlico, uh, yourself. Hey, I'm Warlico. Uh, I'm from Portugal. I'm a university student. I'm ma majoring in. Uh, technologies of information, basically computer science, just weaker. Uh, I've played uh, only one game of 3.5, uh, 
before this, and I'm not very knowledgeable. I've played some sessions with Heavy Jesus and Tree Man and the other guys on the Skype call. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, I've have, have to, to avoid putting myself forward as a player for them. It's just like, hey guys, can I play? Uh, no. no, I already play too much. It's okay. Yeah, you, um, that's were you part of the the session where they uh, angered a treant by rolling too many natural ones? Uh, yes, I died in that session. There are, there are many stories that circulate through the Skype stream due to uh, yes. these uh, little practice sessions you've got going. Yeah, legendary stories. So anything interesting happening in your life? Uh, nothing much. It's How's cold the, out here. It's cold medical. out here. Exam season, season, uh, elections, but nothing that important, I guess. <laughs> ah, just elections, nothing important. Yeah. Okay, dokes. All right. So um, this is your first, oh, well, third session of fifth edition then? Uh, second. I okay. haven't played another session. Okay, dokes. All right. Well, be a nice gentle ease into it. Okay, and uh, Mari, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, uh, I'm a biology teacher. I've been for a couple of years now. Uh, I've uh, played maybe two sessions of D and D Fifth Edition this autumn, but uh, this is the first one online, so I'm very new as well. Um, well say I tried to, to be the internet. Hello, internet. Uh, I tried to be a GM once for a couple of friends as well, so that was interesting after having played played twice myself. But it it was okay as well. Good to hear. Good to hear. And uh, you've been teaching biology long? Ah, oh, five years maybe. Okay. Uh, anything going interesting on in your life at the moment? How's the weather? <laughs> uh, fairly cold. Getting a little warmer now. Uh, isn't this interesting enough? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we'll see, right? Okay. Well, speaking of. Um, Biology, and since everyone else uh, gave their, their university degrees, uh, genetics, geneticist. Ah, oh, yeah. And hopefully at some point I'll have a wonderful job. I mean, not well, that I don't so. already, my, my job is wonderful, if, boss, if you're watching. Um, okay, so I think the next step would be to have everyone uh, tell us a bit about your, your character, just kind of what you're playing today. And uh, when we start the the session, you can all like give a description of your your characters as you. I'm assuming you're all going to meet up in the the tavern, the old cliche. Yep, I guess. At least, no. I am going to be at the tavern. Okay, no. so if we start with you again, Carl, uh, tell us a bit about your character. Okay, I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing a paladin, uh, Kresik. A little bit about him. Um, you know, comes from the mainland empire over the bridge, you know, that we all know so well. Uh, used to be, um, I guess part of a, what's the word, like a monastery or a, or an order, but he's left that now and he's, he's back over here, you know, selling his sword for adventure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. Uh, you know, likes well, weapons, and he cannot lie. Okay. Well, we, we can leave it there for now, and you can describe yourself when we get to it. Um, Scar, a bit about your character. And he's a fighter. Not been a fighter for long, but he's good at it. Um, he's out seeking vengeance, you know, as they do. But um, he's probably too good for his own good. Um, and yeah, he's just from a small village, you know, small guy. Well, it's a big guy, but yeah, nobody knows him. But they will do, and that's about it. Okay, dokes. And uh, Waleko? All right, I'll be playing uh, uh, Rakus, the dwarf fighter. Uh, he was from the Empire, but he got banished because he felt discriminated against. Ah. So you, uh, you're a dwarf, is that correct? Yes, I'm a dwarf. Did you uh, speak up against uh, dwarf... Um, what would the right word be? Hmm, dwarf... 
dwarf racism, I guess, would be the right term. Yeah, something racism like that. Dwarves. Yeah, was yeah, it, something was like it a that. public? Was there a riot? Uh, not officially. <laughs> Maybe we'll learn more about that later then. Maybe. Okay. And uh, you're a fighter as well. Yep. Okie dokes. And uh, Mary, a uh, little intro to your character. Yeah. Uh, to round out the group, uh, I brought another fighter, a human fighter called Lynn, and she's all about protecting people. And she's gotten out here to do that and to get better at her craft, to get better at fighting. Okay, so to set the scene, uh, we are in Haven, which is a bit west from the mighty bridge of title. Um, and it's a small, growing kind of um, colony. Uh, it's got a few buildings that stand out a, a bit more from the others, but for the most part, you know, just kind of farmers and refugees and exiles moving about trying to establish a life for themselves uh, in the town of Haven and in this town there is a, a tavern which is growing a couple stories to it ever since the warg's head was mounted above the bar it's a, a large wooden building with a, a little fire pit in the, the center over which a, a little suckling pig is slowly rotating and it's called the last hope so called as it's the last hope for good ale, good wine, good mead, before you go any further west. So, who's who's at the tavern already? Is one of you sitting around a, a, a table with the prospective quests you wish to embark on rattling around inside their head? I was inclined to do the wagon mission. Okay, so um, perhaps we, we see um, the, the dwarf fighter... Um, Rakust, sitting with maybe a, a tankard of ale? Yeah, yeah. And a, a parchment on the table before him, containing the information. Yeah, so okay. D describe yourself, Rakust. So, uh, Rakust is bald, but he has a beard with two braids on the front. And he's just sitting at a table, minding his own business, drinking ale, good ale. Not the cheap, not the cheap stuff, and he's waiting for others to arrive and potentially pursue this mission. So, do others arrive? Who's who's the the first of you three to to walk into the tavern and and sight uh, uh, Lin Lynn was, I think. Uh, she walks in and goes forward to the table and sits down, and has her own glass with her. Uh, I hear you. I decided to go out for the wagon. I would like to join in if I may. Um. Yeah, I we didn't like that. You're free to come. Most excellent. Two warriors together in this adventure. What could be better? And I, I think what could be better is the moment when the door swings ajar again and another bold warrior strides in. I think yeah, Cressic. Uh, so walking in, full, probably already fully armoured um, in his full chain mail, uh, a shield on his arm, a mace at his hip, and a great sword slung on his back. Um, human, uh, like dark hair with uh, like bright blue eyes. Uh, he probably... To be honest, I don't think he would notice either of them at first. He'd like go get himself a drink, and then after like sitting for a while, he might notice like two warriors like sat at a table talking. I assume they'd already be talking about the job, or they, they'd they've got the parchment something. on the table. Yeah, exactly. So he would go over, um, put his hands on the table, and say something like. Ah, you looking to go after the wagon? Yep. You want to join us? If you wouldn't mind another. The more the better. <laughs> he looks think... like he could be useful with a sword and all. I think 
more the better is the, the line where the door swings open again and uh, the final of the four, Andy, walks in. A tall, dark figure. Slightly walks mysterious. In. Slightly mysterious. A long braid going down to the back of his knees. Walks in, comes to the bar, orders himself an ale. Wiry old man behind the bar, slides the, the cask over, accepts your coin. He takes it in his hands, it's sloshing over, walks over to the table of only the people that he sees. It's pretty early, so, only people in the bar. What's going on? You, you look up and you, you see uh, Andy, this tall dark figure, braid hanging down, standing over you, drink in hand. All of you sitting there around the parchment. We're going to go on the on this mission. It involves a missing wagon. Pays good. It's near here. Wanna join us? Sure, we can split it four ways. Surely. Nookie dokes. So I think I'm just going to uh, read out the the job for you all. Okay. All right. So uh, the job I, I believe you're taking is the missing wagon. I uh, haven't seen a lot of uh, dissidents here. Okay, so um, a small parchment is like staped to the, the board or the, the tree outside in the town uh, square. And it says, I've been expecting a wagon load of supplies from the Empire. It's growing later by the day and I worry that it has become tied up in Imperial bureaucracy or lost to banditry or the foul monsters that populate this land. I'm offering 25 Imperials for any man that travels to Fort Vigilance and inquires as to its whereabouts, and a further 50 for the recovery of the shipment if the worst has come to pass. And it's signed, in an elegant hand, Jaudi, and it bears just underneath it a thick kind of black wax seal with uh, a bird pressed into it. So this is this is the the parchment that you, you have, and you know um, Zhao Di, by popular wisdom, to be the owner of the general store, the only place in Haven to go if you wish to buy something, other than ale, and perhaps vegetables from the surrounding farms. Although he sells them too, so most of the farms sell them. So you're all you're all probably aware, like right off the bat, where Fort Vigilance is. Because uh, I'm assuming none of you were born beyond the bridge. You all travelled here from the bridge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you would you would all know every one of you that Fort Vigilance is the Empire's last bastion of defence on the bridge. It's the on the western side of the bridge, and it defends the bridge itself from everyone that's beyond the bridge. It's a, a massive, stout, very um, plain looking stone fort that sits atop a hill and is patrolled by many empire soldiers clad in the finest arms that a military empire can bring to bear so traveling uh, traveling there it's about three days um to the east i would say yeah it's pretty much two days straight northeast but um three days if you go north and then uh, kind of easterly which you would go uh, to avoid um, the, the stretch of barren land that is approximately one day northeast of Haven which the, the, the road well, rough trail kind of winds around the outside of so you all, you all kind of know the whereabouts of Fort Vigilance, the bridge itself and where you would be heading but uh, don't let that stop you from inquiring, if you wish. Maybe we should actually tell him we're going after the wagons. Shall we? we go? Yeah, we should tell him. Okay. So um, you all you all get up and leave the the tavern, or do you finish your drinks, chat a while, then go tell Jaldi? What's what's the deal? We can down them and just. Let's get going. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds like how warriors should travel. <laughs> okay, so uh, Andy, you 
fling back the, the ale and begin walking out, and I assume the rest of you are all just chugging back your drinks and stroll out. You quickly navigate your way across the small uh, centre of town to the general store. It's a rough wooden kind of thing with you know barrels outside filled with hoes and scythes, um, wooden broom handles, you know, some furs hanging outside, a wagon wheel. Inside there's you know sacks of grain and such, and there's a small counter and behind it, completely dwarfing the counter, is a large man, at least 6'6", uh, six, six, broad-shouldered, um, with a kind of rough but friendly face, uh, tattoos going down his arms, and he's wearing a uh, black leather doublet, which is, like, torn off at the shoulders, and on its front it has um, a crest, which has a, a black bird upon it. Uh, he smiles warmly at you, uh, and uh, goes, Ah! Fresh customers! Greetings, come in! And as, as you enter in, you can, you can see a, a lovely suit of uh, plate mail uh, with a little price tag hanging off it. 3,000 Imperials. Something to work towards. Well, I'm just uh, curious if someone will get 3,000 uh, before <laughs> someone else builds a blacksmith. I think Kresik probably puts his hand up as like they walk in and they, they're greeted. He goes, we're not here to buy merchant. Uh, we're wondering about your missing wagon. Ah, yes. Nine days late now it is. I know the bureaucrats at Fort Vigilance would have delayed it some, but this is intolerable. Nine. I was hoping that um, if someone gave them a nudge, perhaps some monetary benefit might speed along the matter. How much? Oh, these bureaucrats, they usually take a small bribe, five or so gold pieces. But such is the price of doing business. And he, he like, frowns heavily. That and all the abominable duties. And then he smiles broadly again and goes, I would be happy to refund you if you had to employ such crude measures to persuade the imperial bureaucracy. And he smiles broadly. Surely we need more than just a refund. Uh, well, I'm afraid I can't just hand out money. It's bad for business, you understand. It's bad for our lives getting your wagon back. I'm sure there's no real danger. You seem very capable. The worst threat would be some rabid dogs, I'm sure. Then why don't you go and get it? I'm the owner of the store. I could not simply trek off to the fort. It would be improper to leave behind my stuff. Besides, us men of money, that's what we have you for. Mercenaries, yes? To fetch and carry such errands. I, I mean no offence, of course. Of course. But we need money. I will pay you quite gladly upon your return. If you Excellent. return, that is. I hope you return. Are we settled? Well, uh, before we go, uh, if we don't manage to get everything back, is there something you would miss more than other things if we can't carry everything? Um, could you make a um, persuade check, please, Mary? <laughs> we'll see. Mm -hmm. hmm. So uh, he 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 smiles and goes, ah, "Yes, well, if you can't recover all of the cargo." And perhaps even if you meet the, the wagon halfway, you could... There is a package the, the wagon master has. A small box, maybe eight inches across. I suspect it would be hardwood lacquered. Um, if you could uh, uh, return that, I, I would uh, pay most handsomely. Wonderful. We would certainly try. And what if it isn't bureaucrats? Then... That is what you're being paid the uh, large coinage for. 
I expect you can deal with the matter. And what's in the box? What do you need that's eight inches across? <laughs> he, he chuckles and goes, Oh, um, some bauble. From my home. Well, my old home. It's sentimental value to me is, well, valuable. And he smiles broadly. Hmm. Okay. Well, do we need anything else? <clears throat> Let's get going. Yep. I just hope the wagon's not broken. And he goes, I could sell you a wheel. <laughs> Perhaps some fine timber? It's quite hard to come across in the open. Maybe you can refund it us. Well, if you repair the wagon, I'm sure the wagon master would be happy to pay you. Certainly. And he uh, he starts like listing prices. It's like, ah, yes, five silver for a wheel, uh, um, four silver for a, a plank of wood, uh, two copper for a nail, you know, stuff like that. And he's just like, hey, want to buy stuff? A any takers? We'll carry it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah. Four fighters. What could go wrong? Okay. He he smiles broadly at you and goes. Yes, well, um, the, the wagon should have been coming, uh, uh, he like, goes, should have been coming into Haven from the north, uh, following the trail. If you uh, head north from Haven till you get to the small hills, uh, then then head east. Should be, should be around there. The hills are about a day away. You should see the trail. I'm, I'm sure you passed by them on your way in. And he smiles again. And they smile back broadly. <laughs> okay. So, is there anything yeah. else anyone wants to do in town before you set out? No, I don't. I think we're good to go. Don't see any reason to delay longer then. Let us uh, find Haven on the map. Send to the camera. Drag over the people, pop off the cover, Boop. and sent you again. So um, here we are, and this is a, the little voodoo doll. Is the party? You're all in the the lovely little village of Haven, surrounded by fields and rough grassland. So um, have any of you had a chance to read the uh, the travel rules? Um, have a look. There were three ways of traveling, right? Basically, um, yeah. Uh, each travel period uh, for three days, you can use either athletics, stealth, or survival, and they all give you different things. Uh, athletics makes you move quicker, allows you to give advantage on athletics and acrobatics, and ignore weather. Stealth allows you to uh, sneak, uh, gain advantage on stealth. Uh, surprise um, combatants on the road if they don't know about you yet, get a surprise round in a fight, and uh, hide your camp. Survival allows you to hunt for food, spend uh, a travel action to get food instead of rations, to navigate, to know where you're going, and uh, to ensure a safe camp. And one of you will, uh, one of you will be the, the navigator. Hmm. Uh, and hmm. we're lost already. Yeah, <laughs> if you could not move the token, that would be good. So, um, who wants to lead the party? Uh, who's got the best um, survival? <clears throat> I got... I got plus two on survival. I'm pretty bad at survival. Um, I've got minus one survival. Uh, I'm quite good at athletics, so we could move that way, but... We might get lost and die, so... Well, I think we are following a road or a path to start with at least, so going fast seems reasonable. There, yeah, there's um, there's a rough, like, trail leading north out of Haven. 
and you also have travelled this this route before. You've travelled uh, the the trail from Haven to uh, Fort Vigilance before. It's it's known to you. The chances of you getting lost are ah slim, slim, small chance, tiny chance, really. Not worth mentioning. Cough. Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, I could do athletics if you guys. If you guys don't mind getting lost. I don't mind getting uh, lost. That's fine. Alright. Cool. So, do you want me to just roll athletics? Yeah. Um, and which one of you will be um, scouting? So, the, the person that's at the front of the group, uh, it's their perception and their stealth you're relying on to spot dangers and to avoid the group being spotted. Scar would be the best since she has the highest passive perception. No? Yep. It's true. So, Sounds Sky, you good. want to be the scout? Okay. Cool. So, um, Carl, if you just want to uh, roll up your skill, and we okay. can uh, get this journey underway. Straight out of the bag. Okay. Let's see what that gets you. 25 is five actions. So, you have five actions from athletics to spend over the next three days. Quicken pace is double your movement for the day. Uh, bolster is advantage on athletics and acrobatics, and endure is ignore weather. Speaking of weather, uh, could you roll 1d100? What's the weather like today? Ah, 28. Hmm. I'm, I'm sad to tell you that the weather today is probably going to be absolutely fine. Sheets I'm looking for. 28. Yep, uh, it's a perfect day. The sun overhead is nice and bright. The blue skies roll past. It's a bit chilly. It's the 14th of January, so there's a bit of that cold air. But beyond the bridge, it's quite a, a warm place. So even in the middle of winter, you know, it's enough to get you sweating as you stride out of Haven in your heavy armor. So if you just want to um, click on the, the token, Carl, and move yourself in the direction you want to go. One, one hex at a time, allowing me time to kind of keep up with you. Okay. Now, what, now I'm really bad at memory. What directions were we told? Um, he north, gave you the direction north, and then north by a day, and then east, until you hit uh, Fort Vigilance. Okay, so north... And yeah, we we're bolstering our movement, right? So we can go faster, uh, quick and pace. Yeah, that, that's that's a good idea because we have five actions for three yeah. days. So, no um, in, uh, sparing them. And then, was it east? Far north first. Uh, one day is was it four squares or something like that or four. We're oh looking for low hills, at least. Yeah, yeah. So I can see some hills up here. So it'll be east, right? East is that way. As as a as a point, like one hex is about um, two hours of movement, uh, and yeah. um, when you're quickening your pace, it's an hour. So you you literally just walked an hour across open farmland right now. Yep. So then east is this uh, way. Continue north first. Uh, at least uh, four mm. squares total is one day. Oh yeah, it was a day north. There we go, that makes sense. So, yeah, all right, so this way. Cool, okay. And you stroll out onto the, the open hills and the ground quickly rolls back down before you into this kind of rough grasslands, you know. Bit, bit boggy in some places, kind of sporadic grass. Pretty, pretty normal though. You've been this way. You can still see the trail still leading north. So keep moving. Okay. So as you um, come down uh, from the hills, you can see to the northeast, uh, like a, a small um, ruin, uh, blackened, charred timbers off in the northeast direction of what looks to be like a, a small farmstead or something of that ilk. Just over there. 
you can perhaps see some uh, empty fields from the distance you're at now. No, um, we should just ignore it, right? Doesn't yeah. yeah. I don't think there's going to be treasure in a burnout farmstead. And then one more north, yeah. right? Or two more north? Two more. Okay. And uh, could you roll a d100, Carl? Uh, two. Nothing, nothing happening. The sun is midway up in the sky on the first day. It's all going very well. And then one more. Cool. And you, you see a, a small cluster of, of hills rising up out of the ground. And the, the rough trail you're following begins to head kind of northeasterly. Okay. Uh, nothing else happens? Nothing else happens. Very, very mundane, just traveling across open ground. Okay. And then northeast. Okay. And then the trail continues and it begins to kind of falter a bit and pitter out, but you can see it going generally east-ish. Okay. That's uh, six hexes, so carry on. Mm -hmm. Just keep it moving. No nothing interesting to see here. All right. Okay. The uh, ground continues to be flat ahead of you, heading forward to the east. It's all just kind of this rough scrubland. Okay. Do we still see the the trail? Um. Give me a, a hmm. Perception. I think it'll just be perception. Okay. Yeah. You you can clearly see some like uh, wagon ruts. Um in the trail and some feet that, you know, it's kind of a worn trail in the grass going, you know, in the northeast to southwest kind of axis. No. You haven't lost the trail, it's still there. Yeah, it's actually useful. Um, and then, keep moving? Yep. That's good. Okay, and could you roll two D100s for me, please? What was that? Two D one hundreds for me, if you please. Okay. Okay. Um, and okay. So, nothing. Nothing's the matter. It all seems good and hunky dory. All right. And uh, this would be roundabouts where you would camp for the, the first night. So, you you'd be moving, hustling across the open ground quite quickly, and uh, night's crept up on you. The, the moon's beginning to shine out over the top of the planes, you didn't planes beneath you, and it's time to draw up a nice little camp and nestle in the, the quiet land, far, far away from Haven, where no one will hear you scream. Wonderful, so, that's... You all, all kind of draw out your tents or bedrolls, what have you, and begin setting up a camp. Uh, Carl, if you could roll me... Actually, um, Scar, if you could roll me a d100. Yeah. Excellent. And so you all kind of have headed out of Haven. You're still following the trail. Looking good. You're your first foray out. Um, do any of you want to do a scene for inspiration? This is a um, scene where either you talk to each other in character or you have a flashback from your backstory or there's something that your character's thinking about and you just kind of say it and you gain inspiration, which gives you advantage on a roll, and then someone can ask you a character. Uh, someone can ask you a question, either in character or out of character, and you answer it, and then that person gets inspiration as well. So is, is anyone interested in uh, some, some inspiration? Does anyone want to frame a scene? I'm pretty bad at it, but I don't mind. Excellent. Well, while they can set, set the right. bar nice and low. All right. Let's do this. So, as we're sitting around a campfire, I guess, uh, I start remembering things from my past. And I ask some, s several people in the group, everybody, I guess, uh, why they came here. Everybody answers. And without anybody even asking me, 
I start telling my story that I was just a little farm boy working in the farms doing everything my mom and dad told me and every day they came collect tax on our farm and daddy didn't like that <laughs> okay, sorry uh, so I, I noticed this and I noticed that my father didn't enjoy being taxed every single day it, it didn't make sense to him so in secret I went practicing practicing to fight because since my daddy my <laughs> my father didn't enjoy being taxed I thought I would do something to stop them from taxing us this hard and uh, eh, several years after this uh, uh, sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Keep going. Uh, yeah, several years of pressing, I, I felt confident enough to take on the taxers and uh, defy them, not pay taxes. And they didn't tax us that day, but the next day they taxed us double and they came with soldiers so I couldn't do anything so I felt devastated by this but that didn't stop me from from feeling mad at the Empire uh, so I tried to recruit people from my my race dwarfs that all felt oppressed not just from near me, but all around my village. And they didn't want to fight the Empire. They, they were forced to take that abuse. And I didn't like that, so I went alone. And I got my ass beat. And they took me out from my home and sent me uh, here to Haven. So they, they probably like marched you across the bridge and the last thing you, you saw of civilization in quotation marks was fought vigilance behind you as the, the pair of Empire soldiers just push you forward. How long ago was this, if I, if I might add? What, what? How, how long ago were you exiled? Uh, Assuming the, this session is the first time you've appeared in Haven. A few years. Almost like ten. Ten years. Okay. Okay. So, um, so one of you can ask um, Waleko or uh, Rakust, uh, the character in character, um, a a question. I have a question. Um, how have you been surviving these years? Well, I'm a fighter. I I fight. I ask people to help me and tell them my story and they they admire what I did a lot of people in Haven have been oppressed as well and they feel a connection with me they feel the struggles I have been and that's mostly how I've been surviving also doing that an occasional job cooking Okie dokie. So um, both um, Carl and Mary, you both gain inspiration for Rakust and uh, Lenny? Lenny? Lin? Lin. I put a full stop after your name and it looks like a tiny I. Um, Lin. Okay. Um, so I, I think we're good to carry on um, the next day with the travel. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, the, the next day, the, actually, um, do any of you, other than the, the asker of the, the question, do any of you have any in character like kind of um, conversation about what uh, Rakust has just been telling you all? Do any of you like offer him, oh no, that's so bad? Or is it like, ah, buck up, you dwarf? 
what's the sentiment among, <laughs> among the party when uh, Rakus finishes his sorry tale? I think um, Kresik probably mentions something about how, like, it's probably something along the lines of, like, um, worry not, small dwarf. Uh, all men know Therantiel, angel of judgment, will enact his right upon those who wronged your family. And then he like he like crosses his arms and like looks up as if he's just said something like really like inspirational. And he's just like Thank and you. He's for... gonna roll his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh Andy, was it? Andy. No, not Andy. Carl's character? Uh, uh, yeah. I thank him for the words of motivation. And then snuggle up to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then. So um, the, the night passes uneventfully. You probably hear some howls in the distant wind. The moon passes overhead and is shrouded once again by clouds. And you rise to the chirping of little birds hiding in bushes and amid the, the small trees that dot the Uden plains. And you're, you're ready to be in your adventure again. So I'm assuming that you're going to spend another travel action to... Uh, March on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you can still see um, the trail. It's kind of going easterly, in a kind of like meandery way. It's not like it's not like a road or anything. It's just it's well trodden. People travel this way often enough that you can see the the, the tracks and the area where the the grass is kind of a bit barren. But it's just kind of easterly from here. All right. Uh, yeah, so let's move up. Okay, can you roll the d100 for me? Okay, carry on. And if we move sort of. Okay, and um, well, Eko, could you, could you roll the d100 for me? Alright. 100? Yep. Cool. And carry on. The hang on a minute. Um, yep, the the land is very plain and boring and dull. Nothing, nothing interesting. Just open plains. Nothing to see. Right. Okay. Um. Andy. Um, Scar, could you give me a perception test, please? A what, sorry? Uh, a perception test. Yep. Um... Third one down in the second column. Perception. No skills thing. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, as you're as you're passing this way, um, Scar, you you notice something. You you can't see the the trail anymore. You're pretty sure it still leads east. But what you can see is like you can see patches of blackened like grass around where the the, the grass has like been burnt. And this you've you've just been noticing this as you've been walking a, a, along. Okay. So Andy would stop and have a feel of it. So as as you feel it, it feels like brittle, like it's been um, subjected to heat and dried out, and it kind of like crumbles in your hand. Mm -hmm. And as it, it does, you notice this like um, kind of greenish stain. You know when you get, like rub uh, grass on yourself and it like gives you that greenish stain, but it just it doesn't look quite natural. It looks you're not sure how, but it doesn't have the right colour. It reminds him of the barn they passed earlier. Maybe there was the, more the, to that the barn. The ruined uh, farmstead? Mm -hmm. Maybe there was more to the barn than uh, any of them bought. Hmm. Does any... What could be a good skill for this? Does anyone have, like, 
nature or arcana or so um uh, do you do you point this out to everyone andromeda you like hmm, is there a mold in the spa something yeah with the graphic? yeah and you would point it out okay um, wonder if anyone knows what this may be this strange substance is it uh, just in one spot, or is it a pattern, or a trail, or patches leading? Isn't it? Um, if you give me uh, an intelligence check, um, uh, uh, Andy, you can you can recall because you've been walking along and you you spotted this, and you've just come up upon a, a a pretty close largest clump that you approached. Okay, intelligence. Sorry, I just have to find it. So be on your core stats. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so yeah. Cool. Um, that's the saving throw, but I think, yeah, because you're not proficient, it'll be the same thing. Okay, um, so thinking thinking back, yeah, it's, it's definitely a trail of some kind. Um, from where you're currently standing, it would lead north, uh, east, and it, it looks like something has... Um, moved through this way, which has done this to, to the plant life. Uh, you can't tell if it's moving northwest, uh, not northwest, uh, northeast or southwest. There isn't like a, a direction, but it's it's clear from where you currently are, like the trail leads northeast. I'll ask the rest of the group whether they want to follow it or carry on. Um, did anyone want to uh, have a look at it with nature? Investigation would probably work as well. If anyone has either of those. Or if you just want to roll dice. Mm. Andy could do it. Okay. Um, give a nature check, why not? Nature. There we go. Cool. Um, it does look like grass. It's vaguely the right colour. It just looks off like um like if someone had uh blanched it like boiled it uh, kind of looks like just off color you're pretty sure though the green color is the grass itself but it's just something about it still kind of sticking in the back of your mind you can't quite work out what it is it's oh, probably the... yeah, it's, it's probably something magical i'm not good with magical it seems scary. I guess we, we go to vigilant, vigilance uh, and see if, if the wagon has passed already. Because I got a feeling that this is related to what we are doing. Mm, could be. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Crestic says anything. I think he just sort of like waits for everyone to like have their like discussion about weird grass and then keeps them pressing on okay the so if you, if you want to move yourself in the, the direction you think you're going all right uh, all right let's go northeast <laughs> okay um that was the way uh, the trail was going wasn't it sure i mean let's just go let's go and have an adventure guys okay so um scarlet could you roll a perception test again and, um, Mary, could you roll a d100? Okay. So, nothing out of the ordinary occurs as you travel onto the hill, but, uh, Scarlet, uh, and... Andromeda, Andy, uh, manages to keep a track of where this trail is going. You're not following it per se, you're just kind of walking north e uh, northeast, but you keep spotting it every now and again, and you notice it's getting, like, um, more distinct. You can see, like, patches where the ground is, like, uh, blackened, and almost looks as if it's scorched, but you can't really see, like, any red embers or anything like that. It's all just this, um, this blackened grass and small patches and it's definitely leading in a north easterly direction and as you're passing over the the hill um you see a entrance a like little little cavernous entrance i'll tell you what it looks like in a bit like um like the the hills 
there's kind of like a, a, a crack in in one of them and you you see some jagged rocks and something like that and then you see like a, a fissure in in the the craggy rock face that leads like into the hill and you can see that the um grass either side of this uh cracked hill is like badly scorched like you've been seeing and this is maybe about 500 400 feet off to the left of where you're walking. Uh, and let me let me do a doodle on the map for you. It's in the same hex. Okay, dokes. So um, you see this, Andy. Maybe it's something we should look into because it seems like it could be dangerous where we're stepping. Scorches could be a trap. Maybe people have been through it before. Maybe we should investigate. Might as well, we're here. I uh, guess. I don't have any objections. Yep. Who wants to lead into the cave? Okay. So, as you begin walking down between the, the, the crack of this, this hill, you pass over the ground where it's, it's blackened and, and scorched, and it's um, can I have another perception test from you, Mary? Okay. So as you as you walk over it, you get this like um, smell that like goes up your your nostrils, and you kind of like, and it it, it smells like uh like vinegar, like um off wine. Mm. Doesn't smell good. And then the ground under underfoot is like dry and crunchy, and every step kind of makes more of this scent go up into your nostrils. And you you're at the the edge of this kind of um, like heavily blackened area right now, and you're looking into this area where there's just craggy rocks, these grey, sharp, jagged rocks, and ahead in the the centre of this this crack, there's this fissure which leads under the mountain, not mountain, hill. Mountain and hill are slightly different. Can anyone see anything, or do we need to light a, a torch? Or um, you're you're I... still out in the open in, in daylight. You're just at the the edge of um, one of the areas of like this destruction, and you're looking straight ahead where the the crack in this hill is, and the the fissure which leads into the hill itself is like midway point in this crack. So if you imagine like uh, the hill's just kind of like cracked open, and on one of the cliff faces, there's like an opening into it. It's just like a, a small, like, mm, cave entrance, I guess, would be the right kind of term. But it's not uh, like cavernous or anything, it's like a crack. But it's something you could walk into, not something you would fall into. No, it's, no, no, it's, it's, like... it's, it's, it's definitely walk in, not fall in. It's yep. um, on, a, on a cliff face. Are you sure we want to start walking into random cracks and I'd much rather uh, get paid today or well not today but get paid at some point well we can continue southeast if we want to I feel like whatever's in here could easily kill us all Maybe I'm just being cautious, but uh, I ain't scared of no ghosts. No risk, no gain. Cressic, you look around the the party of hearty warriors, and you you find no purchase with your words of caution. Do you bend to the, the will, or do you stand stalwart and convince these overly brave folk of the doom that awaits them? Either way, um, we're going to be taking a break now, so you'll have five minutes to talk amongst yourselves and discuss it, and uh, we'll we'll return at, yeah, well, five minutes, basically. So, um, if you're watching this, bye, see you in a bit.